Um, in 2D composites, I already pointed out, are generally handled on the peak comp entry. And the peak comp entry, for each layup, you give it a material, an angle, and a thickness. So you have a material, an angle, and a thickness, and you just give a list of those. There's also on that PCOMP card, you didn't see it back here, but it's the LAM option. And the LAM option lets you do some cool stuff. If you have a symmetric layup, you can put in half of the plies and just tell it it's symmetric. So you can get away with a much shorter, uh, shorter card if you have to do that. And the other options have to do with sandwich. If you have a honeycomb cord composite, with the honeycomb cord, there's special things that happen to composites. So if you put in here HCS for the laminate option, it's going to look at your model and say, ah, you've got a honeycomb core, I'm going to calculate these other, other output things. And the same is too with F FCH with the foam core composite. Um, there's an automated one where it looks at the properties of your core and tries to figure out which it really is. Um, generally, if you're doing a layup, you probably know that, so you don't necessarily need that option, but it's there if you need it. We also have a couple options that do smeared composites where it ignores the stacking. It just creates an equivalent orthotropic property and uses that and gives you a result for the equivalent orthotropic. Uh, there's times where you want that, uh, but they're available if you want. Um, 3D solid composite. Nastran has a 3D layered composite element, and you use it with hexa and penta elements. And the elements have to be oriented with Z through the thickness. So this is sort of an important, uh, important point. And just recently, one of our tech guys wrote a little program that will orient your elements for you if you don't have Z through the thickness. So uh, if anyone needs that, give us a ring to our tech support line, and we'll send you the little program to do that. Um, one thing that's capable is that you have one element through the thickness on these. And people have often asked one element through the thickness, but you know, don't you recommend three or four or five or six? And in general, for a normal non-composite 3D composite, that's what we would recommend. However, when you use our laminated 3D layered composite element, internally we're creating three integration points per ply. So even though we've only got one element, because of the three integration points, it's like you have more elements. And if you have multiple layers, if you have 30 layers, you effectively have 30 times 3, or 90 integration points through the thickness, which is you know, equivalent to 90 elements through the thickness. So one element doesn't sound like a much, but it is. Now, this is all handled on the MAT-12 end entry. The MAT-12 entry is not yet supported by FEMAP, but it will be um, at some point, I believe. And it's fairly straightforward. It's a 3D orthotropic. You put in the three E values. You put in three new values. You put in three G values for three dimension. And so you're basically defining full 3D properties. And by the same way, your tension and compression limits are for X, Y, and Z. And your shear limits are for X, Y, and Z. So it's basically the same thing. And on your P-solid card, the way you identify your solid element as a 3D composite is this PCPID field that just says points to a MAT-12, or it points to a P-comp, and the P-comp points to the MAT-12. So that you have a way of defining this relatively easy with a minimum of editing within NASTRAN. 